Hello everyone, my name is Christian and I am the CTF noob. This video is the first in a series on solving the Narnia challenges from Over the Wire, which are a couple of easy exploitation exercises. Just as a disclaimer, I'm by no means a security professional, but I'm a software engineer and interested in IT security. So let's get started with Narnia. After connecting to the challenge server, we begin by taking a look at the challenge files. For Narnia 0, we see an elf executable and the source file from which it was compiled. We'll now have a look at the C file and see what the program does. Okay, so the program starts by defining two variables, well, which is a long, and buff, which is a character array. Afterwards, it prints out what we have to do. In this case, that's changing the value of well from 41, 41, 41, 41 to dead beef. In the next line, 24 characters are copied from standard in to the variable buff. Afterwards, the two printfs print the contents of buff and well. Now the if clause checks whether we were able to override well with dead beef, and if so, gives us a shell. Otherwise, we get an error message and the program exits with exit code 1. Now that we know what the program does and that we have to override well with dead beef, let's see how we can achieve that. If we take a closer look at scanf in line 25, we see that it reads 24 characters, but buff is only 20 characters wide. This we can see in line 21. Since scanf reads four characters more than buff is long, it will store those in the four bytes after buff, which is the location where well is stored. This is because of how a stack frame works. Young Slav Learning created a video series in which he explains how a simple function is written in assembly and how stack frames work. I'll put a link to it in the video description. Let's analyze the memory by opening Narnia with JDB. First, I have to set the disassembler output to Intel. It simply looks nicer to me. Then we disassemble main and find the execution of scanf at main plus 49. Let's set a breakpoint before and after the call to scanf. Now we run the program by typing R. GDB will stop at the first breakpoint and we can inspect the stack with the following command that outputs 20 words after ESP in hexadecimal format. Here we can see the 41, 41, 41, 41, so this must be where well is stored. We continue executing by pressing C and are told to enter something. We enter A, B, C, D and again inspect the stack. We find 44, 43, 42, 41, which are the ASCII values of A, B, C, D we just entered in reverse order. Afterwards we see some random stuff we don't understand, followed by 41, 41, 41, 41. A, B, C, D is stored in reverse order because it is stored in little Andean format. There is a great video by Computerfile where they explain Andeanness, which I'll link in the video description too. Now that we know where we write data and where the variable is stored that we want to override, we can input more characters and see whether we are able to overwrite well. For this, we run the program again and enter 20 A's followed by 4 B's. But first, let's delete the first breakpoint. We then rerun the application by pressing R and enter our characters that we created using a little Python script. Again, we inspect the stack and see a lot of A's or 41's followed by 4 B's. We can inspect only the relevant part of the stack by starting 8 bytes up the stack and displaying 24 bytes. Now we see only the two variables we are interested in. Let's try to overwrite well with dead beef. Using Python we directly call the program with 20 A's followed by dead beef. We stop at a breakpoint and it can inspect the stack. Everything looks good, we can see dead beef, so we continue. The program tells us that we're way off and the output looks weird. The bytes of dead beef are in the wrong order, which is again due to endianness. So we try to run the program again, but with dead beef in reverse order. Again we stop at a breakpoint and can inspect the stack. Dead beef is in reverse order, so everything should work as expected. We continue and do not see the way off message, but it seems that we couldn't get a shell inside of GDB. So let's try to run a program outside of GDB directly in bash. We still don't see the way off message, but we get no shell. The problem seems to be that the shell is immediately closed after it has been started because it does not wait for us to input something. I found an explanation of the issue on Stack Exchange, which I'll link in the video description. The trick explained there is to use cat to wait for input on standard n. Now we are able to pop a shell. Let's see who we are. Narnia1, perfect. So let's read the password of Narnia1 and we're done. Though it is not part of the exploitation challenges, I would like to have a look on how one could mitigate the exploitation. When we have a look at the source code, we can see that the issue is rather simple. 
The program reads 24 characters, although it should only read 20. Just as a proof of concept, we can create a fixed version of Narnia 0. First, we create a temp directory to create a copy of the source. Then we copy the original source file to our new temp directory. We dare change the scanf from reading 24 bytes to reading 19 bytes, because we also need the zero byte at the end of the character array. Then we recompile the source to get a new Narnia zero executable. If we now try our exploit again, it no longer works and we fix the issue. I hope you found this video interesting. If so, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel where I'll solve more CTF and wargame challenges. If you have any feedback for me, simply write a comment under the video. Thank you and until next time.